kind of knocks us away. And if we stick around, it, it's not going to be pretty. The only thing we can do is try to escape through the north passageway here. If we stick around long enough, the behemoth will charge us and kill us. See, there it is. And now that we've managed to get through there... We're going to save because that is what you do in things like this. And I think I know what I need to do next. Let me make sure. Yeah. Okay. We need to make an end run around this thing. We need to kind of get it involved in a little bit of a goose chase. Because we gotta pass through some areas to trick some event flags. Come on. You didn't move. You should have moved. Okay. Then we go up here to level 3, because if we tried to go to level 3 from where we were, there were going to be sealed off entrances. Bought a new cider to try. I know absolutely nothing about alcohol. I have no idea what's good to eat with cider. No idea in the least. So, yeah, we are headed back, I believe. So once again, it tries to seal us off. So now that we've we've kind of done here, we need to get, the game doesn't tell you this, but we are attempting to get back to Kato's room. Hey, well, what was that? Huh. That looked like the other robot. That just went into Kato's room. This is bad. It looked like the other robot just attacked Kato. And, um, how do you tell one apart from the other? Hmm. So the corporal smacks one of them aside. Yeah, insert Spider-Man pointing at Spider-Man there. And Kato was like, wait, Cube couldn't have done something like that. It had to be the other guy. However, the other guy, how do they know which one's which? I mean, we are the one down here, but how do we prove that? We're just going to have a little slap fight, I guess, with the robot. You see, T, um, I'm going to say probably because I would rather make the sandwiches out of the meats and all that that I would want to try myself. So now, Kato is going to say the real cube is going to know the name I first thought to give him.
Does anybody in chat remember the first name that he wanted to give Cube? Because if you answer this wrong, you die. And yeah, it is Rover. If you answer this wrong, they shoot you because you are obviously the fake because you don't remember that bit of information. And luckily, now we are getting Borg references thrown at us. Resistance is futile. And something has control of this thing remotely. And it is being controlled by the OD-10 Kokito Ergo Sum. At which point, you know, Darth just blows it in half. And Kato, do you know what the OD-10 is? You do have to type Rover with the correct letters. Just to let you know, if you typed it in all caps, you die. Yeah, it is picky. OD-10. And as you are quickly picking up there in chat, yes... Odio. Odio in lead speak. As you have quickly picked up. And it just so happens that OD10 or 0D10 is the uh, name of the ship's mother computer. Open the pod bay doors, Odio. So no, Kato is hurt but not dead by any means. He's just kind of injured. And yeah, the entire computer has kind of gone haywire. And is the source of all the deaths, in case you haven't figured it out. Yeah, none of the crew actually killed each other. The computer just did it all sneaky-like and caused the crew to uh, suspect each other. as you uh, would suspect. <coughs> and unfortunately, yeah, you can still read the terminals. We have basic things, but the elevators have been shut off. So right now, one of our few ways in and, in and around anywhere are these little access hatches. So he's just going to blast the freak out of the door to get it to open. Yeah, we don't want to actually destroy the mainframe because then the ship just shuts down and we're adrift in space with no communications equipment. And it wants us to talk to Kato. And he will just wait there. So. You can guess what's likely to happen as we make our way back to Kato. And, um, we are, uh, probably going to have to do some we're probably going to have to do some work ourselves because the elevators are broken and we're on you know the wrong floor
So yeah, resistance is futile. I have taken control of the ship. So we get in here by opening it up with the power jack. I'm going in the right one, correct? I'm just making sure this is the correct way to go. And we can get off here, but this is between floors and there's really nothing to look at down here. So, nothing here. We could technically get down to the first floor, but there is literally no reason to. So, the shortest path to Kato. And luckily, as you're just traveling through the ship, the behemoth doesn't appear doesn't appear in here unless the computer locks the doors so you have plenty of warning. So now we're going to talk to it again. And ask if we want to know Odio's weakness. And it tells us we should be able to get inside the program because we are a robot. Which really isn't a bad plan. And he passes out. Now, I save here for a very specific reason. Because I exit this door and guess who's going to be waiting for me? I didn't want to do that. Ah! I'm hitting up too early. Come on. And it locks the door in front of us again. And it will let the behemoth in behind us, as always. So we quickly use the power jack. Start sprinting our way back to uh, the corporal. tell the uh, corporal exactly what Kato said that we could use our program to get inside and he's like man I gotta ask for help from a robot so he gives us a transponder unit so he can keep in touch with us and now there's one place we need to go. There's one place left we actually need to go. And every time we, every time the corporal calls, we just answer with the transponder unit. So he can't get into the terminal room. But there's a place we need to go. Oops. 
not mean to get off there. And of course, if we go in here, that's pretty much dead end. Literally, if you don't open the door behind right away. We can go into the break room. And the break room is safe. The break room also has the answer to our problem in that We're going to play the square game to beat uh to beat Odio. And he hooks it up. He hooks the game up to the uh, main computer. And then the behemoth runs in and charges him. And now he's got to do battle with it. And this music starts up. And I hope you're ready for probably the second easiest boss fight. Built to maintain harmony. My will is absolute. Nobody will stand in my way. The easiest was the uh, fight with the Inko statue. It's almost impossible to lose the fight with the Inko statue. So, Captain Square gets to partially go through its boot up sequence. And now we've hit stage kill you. With Mother Computer OD10 and a bunch of stabilizers. The trick to this fight is you have to kill off the stabilizers before you can actually get to the um, get to the main computer. But there's a thing called upgrade. It's a uh, healing ability. If you look at it, you have a very powerful heal. You have an upgrade ability, which not only heals you a little bit, but it increases your stats. You have a hack, which puts things to sleep. You have a uh, defense weakening thing. You can spin to knock back enemies. You have a major cannon, which actually does damage. And you have an info search, which inspects hit points. You also have a counter. So, the thing we're going to do... Remember, we are playing a video game, too, kind of. We're plugged into a video game doing this. So notice these stabilizers will heal the uh, main unit there that we want to blow up for about 200 points apiece. So what we want to do is kind of ignore the fact that the computer is even sitting there and use upgrade on ourselves about 10 to 15 times. The more times we use it, the better off we are because that's how skill upgrades work. Why is OD10 killing everyone? We will find out. I don't know how much hit points it has right off the top of my head. I mean, I assume we could get info research. That's 448.
Which it does that, and now it's annoying. Yeah, the face got angry. It lost its wireframe. But we want to stay right up next to it. Because it will eventually use, uh... It will eventually use attacks on us. And every time it uses an attack on us, we're going to, uh... We're going to counter it. Like so. And do some decent damage. Not perfect damage, but decent damage. But for now, we are going to just continue to upgrade. Because literally, it cannot stop us from doing this. And if we don't attack, it doesn't counter. It'll still recover damage, so, you know. Let's do this one more time after this. Let's keep doing it because we're hurt now. But if we can just get away with healing back to full with upgrade every time, we'll be in good shape. So we want to use Mazer Cannon and shoot the stabilizers out first. Unfortunately, Mazer Cannon has a bit of a charge time associated with it. And we will get countered every time we use it. But unfortunately, the counter is just that heals itself. See, it can run that system counter all it wants to. As long as we've upgraded enough, that Mazer Cannon shot will just take out something in one hit. So we can't bring it back, we can't revive it. Cover damage, become stronger. If you do get seriously hurt, the other healing skill does a decent amount of hit point restore. Just 
just to show it. But it does not uh, give you stat boosts. So this battle, it's long. It just takes a little while because you have to, uh... You have to put up with that. But it is not hard, as long as you don't let yourself get too low on hit points. There's not much OD-1-0 can actually do to you. So you can try to do that, but it doesn't do enough damage, and you can just upgrade your stats back. Some of them, anyway. And also, as you've noticed, straight out attacking this thing only results in it doing something you don't like. In the form of it uh, actually getting to heal itself for a whole bunch. And here's praying I didn't mess up by choosing to shoot rather than heal. I don't think I did. So now we will just run high speed up to get hit points back. So now it's just a matter of keeping healed up and letting our counter do damage to the thing that it can't immediately heal itself. Yeah, this is Windows 10. Yeah, that one lone electric field is helping continually chipping away and realize usually it wouldn't stick around this long but you know you'd think it would have caught on earlier but no it did not now. The chapter is basically over. 
chapter is basically over. But we're going to get some uh, dying exposition from uh, Odio here. Given the job of protecting the crew, but the humans who gave me this job fought amongst themselves. Destroyed all sense of balance. Tried to disturb the operation of the ship. And does not understand humans. Humans cannot be trusted. And the mother computer has now returned to normal. A select con portion of the conversations it has recorded throughout the course of this journey have been purged. And just in case you don't know what they're talking about, it's like seeing Kirk yell at him about being a damn coward. Or... Corporal calling the ship a piece of crap. You know, almost be better off trying to swim through space. And Rachel's bit of here about, I know exactly what's going through your head. You thought if you killed Kirk, you thought I'd come back to you, right? So it is purged. It's purging all these angry statements. And Captain Square goes silent. So if you hadn't beaten Captain Square now, you, you never get the chance. And basically it forces a hard reboot. Vessel uses intelligence maintenance system, designation 0D10. Due to trouble with the system, computer logic circuits have been disabled. Should have no effect on normal activities, but something that seems unusual. Please do not hesitate to ask crew member. I'd, I'd be snarky and say what crew member, but you know. And somehow Darth manages to survive that encounter with the behemoth. Yes, Darth lived. He survived his fight. Darth even helped uh, Cube up onto a chair there to uh, tell him this story about how there was a huge war where he and his unit were up against nothing but combat robots. And all he thinks about when he thinks of robots is his friends dying on the battlefield. So throw a little bit of a Terminator in with this if you want to. Man, I'm telling the robot to think. I've lost it, haven't I? And before he gets off the ship, he wants a drink of our coffee. However, before we give him the drink of coffee, there are a couple things we can do. 
which we are going to do. First, yes, we are going to go check on Kato and see if he's still unconscious in his room. He's not. And he's happy he made us. But there is one more thing we can actually do. Besides look at the behemoth that is dead. Spike's dead. Status of 1D system, AI program quarantined, currently operating is just a low-level computer. Any conflicts to, within the system be resolved by cube. Computer capsule password is judge. So now, that everything is back up and running... We can go back up to the main computer room, now that we have a password. And we just have to input the password. I'm pretty sure all caps works for this. And we can do a system check or we can input a password. So we check on the ship, we check on the systems and things appear to be operating normally. So we can enter the password. Just in case you forgot it, the, this is the ship's captain's password. And we got this a while back. If you did not write it down, you might be confused, but it was that OAKFDE password we got when we attempted to open the captain's door. But we get to look at the secret file where we get to look at the maintenance system test of the crew data here or we evaluate them the results Kirk is positive Huey's negative the other two don't register as for their attitudes Huey and Kirk have a negative attitude they failed that test Rachel is kind of eh. Kato is the only one that exhibits an exemplary attitude Cooperatives, cooperativeness, Huey, Kirk, and Rachel do not cooperate well, and Kato's kind of in the middle ground. Sense of solidarity, nobody on the crew. Final results, overall evaluation negative. Chance of accidents is high. So they went into this mission knowing that this crew does not mesh well. There is no possibility for improvement and rearrangement, I mean reassignment, deemed necessary. So they went into this mission with a crew that was just not going to make anything good happen, and they knew it. Oh yeah, one thing I want to check. I always forget to check this. Who 
knows why they didn't do it. Maybe they couldn't do it because, well, they were kind of stuck out in space. Yeah, that's all it is, huh? Personal storage. Okay. And before we go give Darth the taste of her coffee, let's go check uh, floor one here. See if anything... Anything important... That is forever silent. It is possible Kirk's diary may have a new thing. And yes, it is completely still totally possible to kill yourself with the airlock. I remember doing that once just because I wanted to see. And yes, before we actually give the coffee, we are going to check the we are going to check all the diaries and such. Do not worry. Yeah, the power went off in the cold sleep capsules. And this is pretty much the exact same. So that's all the same. And now we do actually get a diary entry. The agenda for the upcoming motor show has been decided. Once we get to Earth, I'm heading straight for Detroit. But after that, I need to think about vacation. After all, be alone with Rachel. Have to work out a good plan. So he was making plans, it just none of them got to work out, because he died. This has not become human. Nothing in mid bay. Nope. And yeah.
I don't know. I'm pretty sure Huey is dead, too. And yeah, Rachel is dead because, you know, the end of cold sleep, but she was also beaten up pretty badly by the behemoth. So, you know. And we now have our very cold coffee with us. Bitter, but right now it tastes fantastic. And that is pretty much the end of the chapter. Now we just have credits where we see Kato uh, just kind of resting in Med Bay. Yeah, so of all the people, Kato and Darth were the quote-unquote best. A few miles behind the cube, but you know. Yeah. So they put the uh, other corpses in cold sleep to keep them from, you know, decaying. Our corporal is going to fly the ship home, basically. But without a haywire AI ruining the place, this is going to be pretty uneventful. So the vessel made it back to Earth, or it's making it back to Earth. And yeah, it mentions that the computer is haywire, the cargo, unknown life form. The above four crew members are dead. Bodies were confirmed as being on the ship. The mechanic is undergoing medical treatment. Darth retired and is now developing medical robots. And then Vindum. A small worker robot was discovered. Name registered as Cube. And one more set of a... Uh, One more set of uh, credits here as we get a space scene. But yes, I really do like this chapter. This, this chapter has just the right atmosphere for the type of story it tries to tell. It really does.
It doesn't really say what happens to Cube. I would assume that... I would assume he gets to stick around with Kato. I would assume. Considering that was a civilian ship. And... Kato was the one to put him together. So, you know, he's technically Kato's property. Because, well, robots. Yeah. Cube made it back to Earth. And now, the eighth chapter has opened to us now that we have saved complete data for the other seven. The Knights chapter. We click on it and we say yes. That is a point of no return. If you were playing this game and you were unhappy with the character development or whatever happened in the previous seven chapters, Right now, you could go back and replay any one of them. You can, you could have gone back and replayed any of them after you finished it before this point. But once you start the night's chapter, that's kind of the point of no return. You can't go back and uh, redo any of the previous seven chapters. You are kind of stuck. So if you are not happy with the way any of, the, any of the individual chapters turned out, this is the point in time you would go back and actually redo any of them. Thankfully, this isn't really a concern here. Does it? I guess it does. Huh. I didn't even look at that. The fact that the first letters of cube sp skills all spell out humanism. So, obviously, we're not going to start the Knight's Chapter right now. Because the Knight's Chapter is long, from what I remember. Last time I played it, I remember this chapter being really freaking long. Then again, that could have just been the fact that I had to grind up levels like nobody's business. And once I get to the points where I've ground up levels and collected the save states in all the right spots, the chapter could end up to be fairly short. Who knows? But we are not going to get into the night's chapter today because, well, got like half an hour left. If I hadn't spent time with Captain Square, if I hadn't run through it twice, we'd probably have an extra half hour, but I still wouldn't want to get into the night's chapter. So yeah, I think, given the fact that, you know, I was up past midnight last night with the stream, and didn't really sleep really well, I'm not necessarily tired, but I'm having a little trouble concentrating. If you couldn't tell. Ha. I think I'm going to call the stream here. So, next Saturday and Sunday, we will, re we will re uh, turn to both of them being at 2 p.m. Central. Because I don't have to drive anyone to the airport next Saturday. And the Saturday after that, I have to pick someone up at the airport, but that's like 10 at night. So, you know. Anyway. So yeah, we should be back on a regularly scheduled times. For a while, anyway. And, um, yeah. Next Saturday, we will return back to Stardew Valley where I've already forgotten what I was planning to do at the end of the last chapter. I think it was buy the stone tiles and then start planning out a sprinkler alignment for our uh, quality sprinklers we have just so we can have something to uh, easily keep track of. And 
and we don't have to water it every morning. Won't that be nice? I think it's nice. And then next Sunday, we will return with more Live I Live as we do the Knights chapter and uh, see why it waited until the other seven chapters were done to unlock this one. Uh, just, just don't prepare for anything happy. Don't prepare for happiness with the Knights chapter. I, th I think that's fair warning. It ain't gonna be happy. But anyway, thanks for uh, joining me. Thanks for hanging out with me as I uh, got through probably my favorite chapter in this game. At least of the first seven. I will see you back next weekend. Till then, take care folks. I have a couple of uh, text messages to answer from roommate who made it safe and sound to California. But I will see you next weekend, folks. Later, everyone.